That brings us now to Rosemary Tumulty. Now, Rosemary has an insatiable thirst for knowledge and understanding. And in an attempt to quench that thirst, Rosemary has no qualms digging up the renowned 18th century bards of South Armagh for a little chat. Metaphorically speaking, of course, or at least I hope she's speaking metaphorically. She readily admits that much of her writing panders to her fetish for Gothic fiction and Celtic mythology. Rosemary is from Kilkeel, now living in Newry, and calls all the land of the beautiful Morn, Cooley and Sleevegullion Mountains surrounding picturesque Carlingford Loch, her home. However, given the option, she'd be a mermaid. <laughs> so, Rosemary, what are you reading tonight? Hunter's Moon or Erdiella. Rosemary, I'd like to invite you up here. I've lost my page. <laughs> Hunter's Moon or Ariella. Well done, Rosemary. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to introduce you to a play that I've written. It's called Hunter's Moon or Ariella. Um, um, Ariella, for anyone who's not familiar, is the 6th to 16th century um, over kingdom of Ulster and North Leinster. Um, and it's referred to these days as Oriel. Um, so the play that I've written um, is. For, I've written it really in advance for next year for the anniversary to mark the 250th uh, anniversary sorry, of Pedro Dorn's death, uh, the poet. Um, now, anyone who thought they were escaping the news tonight and getting out to hear something other than Brexit this, Brexit that, Brexit the other, I apologise now, because here we go. Poised on the cusp of Brexit, one woman stands alone alone to ponder on life as we know it following the Good Friday Agreement here in Northern Ireland. That woman is Rosemary, yours truly. In the pursuit of wisdom, understanding and peace, this English-speaking troubadour takes to the graveyards and byways of Craig and South Armagh late one All Hallows Eve, intent on visiting the graves of the renowned 18th century poets. I'll give you the short version. She wanders around the graveyard, ponders on the past, nothing will do, but she has to take a sneaky peek into the subterranean vault of the O'Neill's clan. Catastrophe strikes and she inadvertently comes face to face with the poets. In a flashback to 1744, uh, the play becomes a bit of a melting pot of society of the era, ascendancy rule, penal laws. We have the Ulster Scots, John Johnson of the Fuse. We have Matt Macca, the ancient Celtic warrior goddess, the O'Neill's clan of Tyrone. We have <laughs> the, and of course the 18th century bards. So, I give you a Hunter's Moon or Ergiella. It's dusk on a chilly All Hallows' Eve in Craigan Graveyard. So, All Hallows' Evening, huh? My very own Bloomsday 2019, near the vault of the O'Neill's clan on Craigan's hallowed ground. Curiosity my compass, inquisitiveness my yoke. Foot jolts near frozen headstones, my neck so dear, near broke. The rectory wall garden, guess I'd better see it soon, for I've examined all the headstone slabs, but not yet seen the O'Neill's tomb. Darkness then descending, along with frost and freezing fog, returning from the poet's trail, crossing river, streams and bog. Each gravestone paying homage to a life long gone. The 18th century still somehow hanging on. A labyrinth of history as lives unfold. In death these men may lay side by side, but in life, adversaries exposed. Irish Celts and bards galore talk of moral codes and Breton law. 17 and 44, the Jacobite rebellion and the French at our door. Fragile truce amongst Ergiella clans, up and around Sleevegullion lands. But war as ever to erupt. People so impoverished, courts so corrupt. My hand rests upon Makui's grave, a humble Celtic cross, embossed with words transcending time, a message from the gods. Then opening gates to O'Neill's vault, perhaps a tiny peak 
For seventy skulls a clan so felled, truth and wisdom do I seek. The slow drawn out sigh and wavering cry, gated hinge joints as old as the very dawning of time. Ferenya, Augustenya, ha, is that all you seek? Cade for gra, August honour. Go speak of foresight with Byzantine Greeks, for the notion of prudence it doth wander. There's an eerie silence in this graveyard. Irish life stolen, Irish life spent. From the past we search the truth to understand that which has gone before. No fountain of eternal youth, the here and now determined, a future to shape, to form, to mould. These bards have impact upon my life, my time, teachings as yet untold. To question us in your hour of need, be gone and bother us not. You're meddling with that which you do not understand. As for us, we're done with life's melting pot. Silence still. No one about. I might as well keep going. So in the vault descending, one step, then another, entering the depths of time, depths of earth, our mother. Sludge upon steps beneath my feet. Suddenly I'm tumbling, tossing, turning. Bones strike stone and to musty earth I fall. Blood from my temple, weeping, burning. Indeed, to question us in your hour of need, which of us is it that you shall heed? For war will beckon the hearts of men, whilst you dabble and plunge with your world-weary pen. Or should people's hearts fly on love's fickle wing, or feet rooted in ground from where sapling shall spring? Audacity now to question us, still does this woman know no limits? Fine, fine, let's gather our robes to find answers they send us her of all women. So to another world I wake, a fog and freezing mist, shadowed figures gliding by, to the river they will not desist. They each hold out a ghostly hand, draped in cloth of muslin. A hunter's moon shines from above. Why I take their hands I cannot fathom. Walk with us, walk with us. Neath the gleam of the hunter's moon. Gallic Shalgar, O oh Gallic Shalgar, La Luna del Cacciatore. Hunter's moon, O oh Hunter's moon, O oh Dio mio, mi amore. Come down from off that leafy path, join us for the time is soon. Such lamb's eyes, you'll be bleating neath the gleam of the hunter's moon. Sasna O oh Croyog, Inchinog, do you truly see? The pillage and the murder, the plundering of our seed. Can't get us out, they'll breed us out. Bloodlines weakened, torn asunder. From O'Neill's vault, seventy skulls rise up. They ne'er made it o'er to Connet. Righteous queen, Helen of Troy. McCoy's weeping, he's falling to his knees. Despair grips the proceedings, and facing shame as more, do I simply freeze. His hefty foreboding presence stills the air, I bow, I shake. His words do chill and haunt me, standing eye to eye in this glistening nook. We raise you up high, set you down under, carry you to Carnally and lay you in the barn below. For those ri that river is as our troubled lives, o'er ridge and stone and boulder. Could she be my flower of maidens, lure not kian me can't. Do you think she'll carry our message? I'll search her eyes, her soul, her face. Pedder's hand reaches from the depths of time, brushes my cheek and lifts a tear. But a calmness has come over me. There's nothing here to fear. Exchange of words and thoughts and minds within this mystic place. Cross realms of time, space and mass. Clear user interface. Gallic Shalgar, oh Gallic Shalgar, la luna del cacciatore. Hunter's moon, hunter's moon, Dio mio, mi amore. The bells ring out, for whom they toll, for you, or I, or they. But all are gone, and my bleary eyes across the landscape they do stray. Should I die in some far off country, in our wanderings <coughs> east and west, in the fragrant clay of Cregan, let my weary heart have rest. That crisp autumnal morning, I stepped from the tombstone on which I lain cold, confused, but conscious of the wondrous breaking of this new day. Thank you.